it because then you'd have to get into the analysis part of it. This is just looking at the relationship of the data. But if I was to guess, if you would come up with a hypothesis, you might say, well, maybe you know these cars are being driven on the road where there's a lot of stop and go on the freeway and whatnot, where higher horsepower cars are not going to be quite as as efficient. So if you're driving a really high horsepower car around here in this range on the fr you know not on the freeway but stop and go traffic you're probably going to be much less efficient on how far you're going to go but maybe if people have really super sports power grade cars they only drive them when they can actually go at a de decent speed and not stop and go and in that case maybe the horsepower wouldn't be uh, such a bad issue it's usually the stop and go but you know that's just a guess then you can get into the analysis on 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 what's the cause now note that if you wanted to make the same graph and say, hey, look, I don't want to pull the data over. I want to just make it from this data set. So I can I can select the data this way. I can go to the horsepower and I can go to the miles uh, per gallon, right? I could select these two data sets. And so I've got them selected all the way down. Uh, notice this one is selected. I just want the data in the table so sometimes that could be a little bit difficult to do. I could say I want then let's try the keyboard method. One way you could do this, by the way, you could select the whole thing and drag all the way down like this just to make sure you're getting the whole data set and not going like to the whole column. And then you hold control down and then I can put my cursor here and I can select these non adjacent columns and select them. So that's the most intuitive way. You still need the keyboard to do it. And then you can insert that way. Another way you might try is you could put your cursor, let's say I put my cursor here and I use the keyboard holding down control and shift and then down arrow. This usually takes you to the bottom of the data set, but because I'm scrolling down uh, that you, you have these blank spots here, it didn't take me all the way to the bottom. It got stopped at the blank. So I'm gonna do it again, control shift down, control shift down until I get to the bottom of the data. And that's why those blank spots uh, are problematic in a data set. And then to get back up to the top, I'm gonna select, I'm gonna hold down control and the backspace. Now I'm back up at, at the top. I'm gonna hold down control to get back to the miles per gallon. So now I have two non-adjacent cells selected. Now I'm holding control shift again and the down arrow. So now it's selected the whole data down to here. Now I don't want to be at the bottom when I insert the scatter plot or else it's going to insert it way down here at 395. So I want to hold down control backspace, taking me back up to the top. All right, so now let's do it again. I'm going to go to the insert tab. We're going to go to the charts and let's do another scatter plot. Uh, not that one, this one. Inserting it and then, so there we have uh, created it again. So boom, and there we have it. And it actually selected, I believe going the, so, well, no, it's opposite now. See, now you've got, now you've got the horsepower uh, over here and I'd like to switch the, the, the rows, right? Because, and why did it do that? Because I had the miles per gallon on the left. So I wanna switch now the X and Ys. So there's a shortcut kind of thing up top. So if I go into here and I and I go into the data, it's got this switch right there, but it's not letting me do it because of the maximum number of data series. So I'm just gonna do it manually. I'm gonna go in and say, all right, let's go to the data, data and I'm gonna look at the data in the edit. And now you can see your X and Y data. So here's your X data. If I click in it, it's the miles per gallon. I want it to be the horsepower. So I'm gonna delete what's in there. You could put an equals and then select the item or you can select this thing and then click over here where you want it to go. I'm gonna to try to select the data, putting my cursor where I have the arrow drop down. So it selects that data set. And then I'm gonna select this again and that'll allow me to see the whole box. And then in the Y, I'm gonna do the same thing, delete the Y and then click this item to select the series I want, which is gonna be the miles per gallon. I'm gonna put my cursor where I hear, see that arrow, select, and then there we have it. I'll click this again. So now I've switched the X and the Y. I can say, okay, and okay. So now we have the same basic uh, scatter plot. And what we would typically want to do is hit the plus button 
and we're gonna say title axes. I'll do this quicker because we've seen this before. This is gonna be equal to the horsepower. So I'm gonna do it this way this time. I'm gonna say equals horsepower. You can see the, the table up top. So now if I change the headers, it'll change automatically. Axis title down here is, is, I'm sorry, that was the wrong one. Wait a second. This one should be the miles per gallon. And this one should be the horsepower. Now I lost that one. This one should be equal to the power of the horse. The power of the horse and then of course we can add our regression line in the same fashion add in the trend line and then i want to look at linear more options but i can go to i can add the equation if i want boom the bucket and then i'd like to make it a line and red you also have this glowing, this glow thing over here that I, I, I think I put on the example. If you wanted to go into here, they've got some neat kind of shade. And then uh, the glow is kind of interesting. So they've got these default glow settings. So then if you wanted that dotted line uh, that's not so pronounced so that you could still see the other dots in there maybe instead of a linear, but then you add that glow to it then that lets it lets it uh, stand out or or maybe you have just a blue line with a bit of a glow to it so it kind of stands out but doesn't cover anything else up all right let's do the same thing comparing now miles per gallon as i'm going to make a skinny j put in my curse between uh j i and j or skinny i and so there we have it a skinny i because i want to be skinny and so I kind of say, and then we're going to say, let's do the same for the miles per gallon as uh, the independent variable, the X axis and the acceleration. So I'm going to do this one faster. So I'm just going to take this whole column, right click and copy. And the easy way to do this is we're just going to put our columns of data side by side over here. I'm just going to right click and paste. So there's our miles per gallon and then acceleration. So I'm going to put my cursor here, right click and copy and put my cursor in Z, right click and paste. Okay. And then I'm going to select uh, the entire thing, putting my cursor in here, insert. I'm going to go to the tables tab, insert a table and say, okay. So it looks like it got the table all the way down. Looks like properly allocated table. I can sort now by miles per gallon. Z to A or A to Z, Z to A, Z to A, or now I can sort this way as well. And now if I want to insert a scatter, I could select this whole thing. Maybe I want the titles in there too. If I scroll down, you gotta be careful that it doesn't select the entire things so sometimes it might be easier to like select these two control shift